So autologous stem cell transplant has traditionally been used as an upfront treatment uh, in multiple myeloma practice after uh, induction therapy. Um, and it used to be based on the studies reserved for patients who were less than 65, given the presumed toxicity with uh, using high dose melphalan. Uh, I think that the clinical practice across Canada has changed somewhat, recognizing that age as a biologic marker is probably not as appropriate as using, um, or sorry, age as a chronologic marker is probably not as appropriate as using age as a biologic marker. And so transplanting people based on fitness and lack of comorbidities rather than a hard cutoff of age. Well, we still uh, use autologous stem cell transplant after an induction chemotherapy. We use Cyborg-D, as I think most people do across Canada. Uh, we will, in, in our practice, transplant up into 70, um, and then we'll go above 70 if you have a good 71-year-old. So no comorbidities, excellent uh, performance status, good overall fitness. But we don't really have a good way to estimate or predict that. Specifically when reviewing uh, this oral presentation, they took the Myeloma 11 study, which looked at CRD versus CTD uh, in both transplant eligible and non-eligible patients. But specific to this presentation, they wanted to look and see whether or not age and outcomes with transplant or non-transplant made a difference. And so they took the age of patients and matched them as to whether or not they got a transplant or didn't get a transplant. And ultimately, if you got a transplant, irrespective of age, you did better. And that they could transplant people uh, really irrespective of our ability to predict fitness, uh, lack of comorbidities, uh, and it really didn't matter as long as you got a transplant, you did better, thinking that now we can not limit transplant to a younger population, that uh, the outcomes for patients as long as they can get through the transplant, are better and superior with the transplant. And I think that that's why we have moved uh, to not use age as a hard cutoff. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, predicting frailty in patients or fitness in patients and their ability to get through a transplant has often been difficult. Uh, often you'll have the elderly patient who will cruise through and you'll have a younger patient who runs into a lot of trouble with transplant. So we still don't have that great predictive uh, tool to use um, to see who's going to do better with transplant. The findings from this trial just confirm what we have done traditionally across Canada, which is not use age as a hard cutoff uh, to be eligible or ineligible for transplant. So it certainly just provides more evidence to what we're, I think, is already standard of care across the country and certainly at our own institution. In the age of novel agents, particularly the newer uh, antibodies and um, some of the newer treatments, we're all wondering whether or not transplant still is going to play a role. Is it going to stay up front? Is it going to be used as salvage? Uh, as for right now, it still remains very much uh, a part of our armamentarium and up front uh, until we see other evidence to the contrary.